I would be lying if I said sometimes I don't have like nightmares. You never know, do you? Not struggled with, but has it's always in the back of my mind. And like we know there's a chance that this video could be like the most painful video in the world to watch one day if something goes wrong. You have no idea how much this hurts. We may or may not be having this baby in a, in a lockdown situation if, if we go back into lockdown next year, which I think we might. That was one of the hardest nights of our life. All right, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another Spen and Alex video. Today, we're talking about all things pregnancy, uh, which we are quite far into the journey of now. We've had some questions from you, which we're going to answer. Alex, you've picked out the questions. Are they good? Some are good. Some are great. Some are thought-provoking. Some are silly. I've put some of those in there. Oh, so we've got some silly ones, have we? We've got some silly ones to, like, start things off, get us chatting, loop things up. Lubing up. <laughs> uh, that's not even a question that's brought up, lubing. That's Alex. And by the way, lubing will come up again, I think. There's a question that... Involves some lubrication. Uh, there's also some serious stuff in there as well. Yeah. Because uh, it's a serious thing, you know, serious having, growing an actual physical human in your belly, uh, which we're far into. But shall we um, just crack on with the question straight away? Let's do it. Let's okay. get straight into it. As we're recording this, by the way, we are um, 30 weeks pregnant and the average pregnancy is like somewhere between sort of 37 to 42 weeks, is it? Very good. You've been yeah. doing your reading. So seven weeks to 12 weeks left if it happens on time. And could very much come early. And if you haven't seen our earlier video, we have announced the sex of the baby. The gender has been revealed. And uh, go and watch the video. If you don't want to know, in five, four, three, two, one. It's a boy. It is a boy. He is a boy. Right, what you got for me? Okay, Spencer, this one's for you. Okay. Hashtag Captain Jack Harrison yes. wants to know. I know him well. It's probably going to be a joke question, knowing Jack. How do you make a baby? Well, he knows the answer to that because he's made two of them. Exactly. Or has he? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jack has two lovely little daughters. So Jack, you know all about the birds and the bees, mate. You don't need me to tell you. Uh, but if you're watching home and you don't know, essentially what happens is um, you find a lady that you like and you offer her FIFA points. <laughs> and if it's 12,000 or more, then you get a baby. <laughs> hashtag the cockapoo. Now, if you don't know who hashtag the cockapoo is, get to know. This is um, your mum and dad's dog, who they've yeah. called hashtag. This isn't a fake Instagram name. The dog's name is actually hashtag. It's probably a video in itself. My mum and dad have a dog called hashtag. Oh, that's the first news flash. <laughs> Second of all, it's got its own Instagram page. Third of all, it's asking questions on YouTube. No, on Instagram. You know what the first sign of madness is? When you get a dog and you call it hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> and then you create an account for him. I mean, we have got an account for our dog. <laughs> and then you write posts as though you're that dog. Guilty! Yeah, you've done all those things. My mum's done all those things. So, yeah, basically, it's in the family, mate. What is the world come to? Our dog's called Joey, though. It's a normal name. Who Listen, calls? We love hashtag. He's a lovely little black cockapoo. But I was against the name because it's confusing for the poor thing. Every time I want to talk about football now in that dog's presence, and obviously at mum and dad's house, football gets brought up a lot. Hashtag, hashtag. He's going to be like, eh, what? Meh, meh. <laughs> I said call him Tag. That's what we're calling him for sure. Anyway, what's the ask? Okay. Hashtag Do it in the dog's voice, though. Sweetie. <laughs> How is that the dog's voice? Isn't he a puppet? He's a little cheeky. Sweetie. Where is he from? We stand. No, the East End. The East End. Hello, Gavna. Where will you be at the goal end for delivery? <laughs> right, apparently, he's in Oliver Twist, this dog. <laughs> um, Do you know what this means? This means, will you be at the entrance? Of when the they exit. become the exit. Entrance or exit? Entrance into the world. Exit from the vagina. From the, yeah. The womb. Will the... you be down there during the delivery? It's a great question. I mean, will it be up to me is the first question because we, we may or may not be having this baby in a, in a lockdown situation if, if we go back into lockdown next year, which I think we might. Um, and there might be rules which say I, I can't be in there until the very action ends. Yeah, so you will be in, you will be there for the action. For the actual push the, and deliver. The, and yeah, exactly. What would you want me to do? So Spencer has seen himself being born. I've, vlog, was, I've vlogged it. It was filmed. <laughs> yeah, Can't come out with the camera. <laughs> All right, mate, how you doing? I've just come out of the womb. <laughs> yeah, so you've watched your mum give birth to you. Yeah. You've seen yourself come out of her vagina. This is, again, it could be a video in itself. I have seen myself be born in video evidence. Also, I'm told. I've seen my mum give birth to a baby. That's all I can say. Could yeah. be me. Could not be me. Right. I can't prove it. You're definitely your mum and dad's son. Either way, do you want me at the action zone? Do you want me at the goal mouth? Do you? Goal mouth is what they should call it, by the way. Do you want me at the goal mouth or do you want me at the half, I think, ha halfway line? I think it's unnecessary for you to be down there. Once Unless, you see it, you can't unsee what you see. Yeah. So I think some men will be like, it's the most amazing thing ever 
to see I'm fine their, with it. their I, child being born. You know, I'm not a squeamish guy. I'm happy to get right down there and amongst it. Yeah. I'm stick GoPros in there, whatever you want. No. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want. <laughs> you want a GoPro in there? But I know that you're not squeamish. squeamish. You can handle it. Seb, on I the other want... hand. So he might not be happy. I think he has revealed this publicly. Seb fainted when his first child was born. Yeah. He, he actually, he almost, he actually almost had a significant injury. He fainted, and, and by the way, I've been reading a book about uh, from the men's angle of like having a baby, and it's actually very common for a man to faint. Uh, not just blood often makes people faint, but obviously the sight of it is Gore. fairly gory, mm-hmm. and people can faint. And Seb did sort of momentarily collapse and actually smashed his head. Yeah, and ended up getting um, a bit of treatment from the, ho- from the hospital. <laughs> He's in the right place, <laughs> but um, that's actually quite common. Uh, could happen. Could happen to me. I don't think it will. I think he stood up and said something like. You have no idea how much this hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Classic, Seb. Wow. I think if it's up to me, I think I probably would like to see it. Yeah, would you really? Yeah. I think we because you know there's always a chance we might end up having a C-section. You know, if there's an emergency. So I think definitely I think when the curtain goes down and the baby emerges from the belly, I'd want to see that. I think mm. that would be really significant. Obviously, I don't. I'm not going to be able to see it myself. It also depends what position I'm going to be in, Spen. Yeah, what we're talking, have you had a funny think about that? Because obviously the movies always portray the classic on, the you know, on your back, straight out. On the bed. But some people do it on all fours. Yeah. Doggy style, you could say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of envisioning being in water, in a water bath. On all fours. <laughs> on all fours in a bath. I don't know. It's not a classic bath. I've never had an all fours bath before. <laughs> Usually you're on your back in a bath. I know, but I think that's there's some interesting positions that women can get into. The baby's born into the water. Baby is born into the water. That's mental to me. It is mental. And then what? So it doesn't come out in the air and then fall in the water. It literally comes out in water. Of course. I'm not, uh, not going to be above the water. No, that's what I'm I? saying. So it's like basically like a fish, like yeah, from day one. You've got to remember, like, he's not breathing in my belly right now air. He's breathing in the amniotic fluid. He's He only takes his first breath when the, when he hits the air. And then it's like... That's <gasps> mental, isn't it? The answer to that is basically, yeah, I'll probably be at the goal mouth, mate. Really? I think so. Like you said, once you've seen Fox it, you box. can't go back. It's fine. I don't plan to go back. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> no, because it's like, yeah, I understand your body and whatnot is going to look pretty crazy, but also it's going to be a physical baby coming out. That's pretty cool. I want to see him be like... Wee! Hello? Okay. Although it'd be underwater, wouldn't it? So I'll be like, I'll, I'll get my, I'll my snorkels. We, we plan for him to be underwater, but we don't know if that's going to happen. We have to be open to all possibilities. What has been the most difficult part of the pregnancy? Do you want me to explain it? Um, I'll explain it. Okay. Okay, so when we first had our midwife appointment, they said because of certain procedures I'd had in the past, they said there was a chance that I might have a short cervix. Now, without going into too much detail, because it takes some explanation, you can always look it up. A short cervix is not great. You don't want that. You want your cervix to be nice, and long, and thick, and closed. Because if you've got a short cervix, there's a possibility that your cervix will open prematurely before it's ready, and baby will make an appearance into the world before you want him to. Before he's ready. Before they Basically, open. the cervix is the bit that sits like right where the baby's here. And you imagine it's going to come out of a certain path here, and it's going to emerge. The cervix sits above uh, below the baby and it's gonna have to go through that and if it's weak the baby could come out early yeah and as the baby grows and gets heavier and the pressure builds on it it can open so we were told right from 14 weeks you need to have ultrasounds every other week to check that the cervix was holding in place we turned up for our first one at 14 weeks and luckily you were able to come into the room with me because by this point it was summer so lockdown had started to lift a little bit and She's having a look look around and she's like, I need, need to get a second opinion here. So mm. she gets somebody else in and we're like, I'm crying. She gets How were you feeling at that point when she said, I need to get another person in? It was a little this, bit like, because yeah. you know they're very well trained in what they can and can't say. Yeah. And bear, bear in mind, this is at the point in the pregnancy when we'd got past the 12 week, which is where you basically, it's the biggest risk period from zero to 12 weeks where you could lose the baby. Uh, but obviously you can still lose it any time. Like, w- we, we, something can still go wrong now. It's very possible. But at 14 weeks, it's still very new, still very early days. And when they're saying to you, I need to get a second opinion in, you're sort yeah. of like... We, I think we were looking at each other just like, what does that mean? But um, the second woman came in, and then at this point, they hadn't really explained anything. They were just saying, yep, yeah, that's... Yeah, we're just taking a measurement. Yeah, we're just... This is what... Okay, sure. Right, they finished up, and they said, okay, we're going to send you down the corridor, and you're going to go talk to a consultant. Consultant. Mm. 
because we kind of we've done our part here now. She did explain one thing though. She she basically said there's a length yeah of a cervix that you want to have, and I think it was like two point something centimeters. Yeah. Oh yes, she did. Yes. So she said, okay, so the minimum we want to see your cervix being is two point five centimeters. Yeah. She said yours is one point four five. Way under. Way under what we want it to be. So she said at this point. I've done my job in terms of measuring you. I now need to refer you to a consultant who will tell you what next steps are. Yeah. And I think we were like, what does that mean? There's a bit of waiting around and a little bit of uncertainty. And I think the, the quickest thing to explain is basically at that point, they then I wasn't allowed into that next meeting. I looked on, on her own. I was outside in the corridor. We had your speakerphone. Yeah, she was on speakerphone, yeah. And the lady basically said, we need to do a procedure on you and we need to do it as soon as physically possible. Yeah. So essentially, uh, what we were told is that if we left it as it was, there's a very good chance the baby would essentially come out too early and we're talking way too early to the point where it would be a miscarriage. It's a miscarriage, yeah. Um, because it wouldn't be able to survive. No. It's 14 weeks. Yeah. And that could happen at any moment. You could even argue that, you know, we might have been lucky it hadn't happened already at this point. I will say one thing, fair play to the NHS on their monitoring. They asked us certain questions in our first phone call right early in the process yeah. about any procedures they had in the past. They identified this as a thing. And then they put us on this monitoring. Because some people don't know they've got a short cervix until yeah. it happens. And then obviously, then you're aware of it going forwards. But we were... So we got it looked at early doors. I don't think we'd have had... Would we had that 14-week appointment if we hadn't told them that in, in advance? No. no. So we'd obviously done all the right things. And yeah, they were basically like, look, there is a chance of miscarriage at this point. Yeah. I think they said around 10%. Yeah. They basically went, if you leave the baby like it is now, there's a 10% chance of a miscarriage. It could come out at some point, basically, too early. Yeah. And you have to kind of be very careful in what you do for the rest of your pregnancy. Like, yeah, a lot of women end up on bed rest and any they literally big movement, can't do anything. Like literally a stretch in the wrong direction could cause it to, to happen. And then back in the day, before they had more sophisticated procedures, women would literally lay in a bed for six months when they were told they had this and hope the baby didn't come out. Yeah. No one wants to live their life like that, right? So we were told, look, you leave it. There's, and this was a random percentage we were told, bit of research online, 10% chance, which was a much bigger in ch chance than we were going to be uh, open to if we hadn't had this issue, uh, the baby doesn't work out. If you have this procedure, the procedure can go wrong. The procedure can go wrong and it can also be about the same percentage chance that you're going to lose the baby in the procedure. Yeah. The difference is if you have the procedure and they want you to do it the next day, you'll know then whether it's worked out or not and you won't have to wait four or five months and then have a potential miscarriage and obviously all the heartbreak that comes with it. It would be horrible regardless, but you'd know right then. So we made the decision which I think everyone would make really, which is to have the procedure the next day, which is called a cervical stitch. Yeah. Which is what you had. That was one of the hardest nights of our life, almost, because it was filled with confusion and just worry. I just remember, like, I remember us having a big argument that night as well about something, and I think it's because we... Our tensions were so high. And it we wasn't were, about whether we wanted to have the I can't even there. remember what the argument was about, but I think we just argued about something, went to bed, and then in like the middle of the night, we were like, are you still awake? Like, yeah, I'm still awake. And then I'd l I look at you, I looked at you, and I was like, I'm scared. And you're like, I'm scared too. And yeah, then, it was just one of those things where there was nothing, there was no decision to make though, really, was there? It was like, we've got to do no, it. No, it was like, let's do it. Let's just yeah. hope for the best. Very quick. Look, they were switched on. They saw it. They got us in the next day. Yeah, we did a bit of research we overnight. Like, we were just waiting for four or five women to have planned cesareans that day. But unfortunately, our time kept getting pushed back. Do you remember? And then I had to... I had to. You were waiting for quite... We were waiting at home for a phone call for hours, weren't we? Yeah. And I had to... What's the word? Not starve. <laughs> yeah, you had to not eat for a certain... Fast. I had to fast for a certain number of hours because I was having a spinal injection. So... You basically had an injection like... that made your whole lower body numb. So you, Alex didn't get put under for this operation. She was, she was uh, conscious... But her whole lower body was numb. It's basically like an epidural. It's, it's some of the thing you can have during childbirth to make it not be as painful. Uh, you had that because of what they had to do. So what they had to do, I'm not going to go into detail, but it's unbelievable what they do. So that some surgeon has gone yeah. in there and he has put a stitch, and we're talking like centimetre distances, around a cervix to essentially strengthen it. They and basically it makes it tight. It's like an elastic band, isn't it? It's more like an elastic band procedure. Yeah. Uh, they, they basically put a, a band around it that yeah. kind of binds it. And, just like and it breathe. means it's nothing's coming out. Alex has that operation. It happened in the evening. Uh, you stayed overnight. Stayed overnight. And then you, you were told basically after the operation whether it's successful or not. And they said, look, we think we've done a good job at it. We think it's sweet. And basically that baby ain't coming out until you take that stitch out. It's impossible for that baby to come out currently. 
Like Alex has to have that stitch removed or a cesarean. A cesarean, yeah. Because it will not go through the cervical. No. So if I started to go into labour and the stitch was still in, obviously they'll rush me in and get a C-section done. Yeah. But that, that was that, that was the scariest moment though. There was a, there was oh. a chance we we basically were told we have a slightly increased chance of miscarriage to your, your yeah. general your general pregnancy, in and the that was trimester. that's not good news. That was. But and then we take. got the stitch, and the stitch worked. And yeah. well done to the people that did it. Thank you to people that did it. And that has allowed us to get to the point we're at now. If we hadn't had that stitch, there's a good chance we wouldn't have got this far. There what? was a sl- there was a chance, not a good chance. Yeah, there was there was an increased chance. Yeah. I should say. There was a question from somebody saying, "Has the pregnancy brought us closer together?" Okay, so here's my answer to that. Alex might not want me to share this information, but this is pretty funny. As a result of Alex having that cervical stitch, Alex has to take a certain uh, um, it's called it's like a type of steroid. It's called a progesterone uh, that helps that area just stay strong and make sure it's doing the cervix is nice and strong and everything's cracking on good. What you don't know is that, uh, shall we say, capsule has to be inserted up her bum hole. Every Every night, night. By yours truly. I mean, she could do it herself. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like, you don't have to do it for me. I don't insist on it I either. I make him do it for she me. She makes me do it. This has been going on for months, people. This finger has been putting a little capsule <laughs> up her bum every night. For months, and it's going to keep going until the baby comes. And it's brought us closer together. And what's funny is, after a few days of doing it, and obviously like copious washing of the hands afterwards, I was like, let's have a look into the industry, see what we can find. <laughs> and we discovered what I call the f- finger dom industry. Finger dom. <laughs> what are they actually called? I don't know. They're basically little condoms oh, I know you put what in your called. finger. They're called finger cots. Finger cots. The little condoms. We've got hundreds of them, mate. <laughs> I am, I would say, one of the leading um, finger anus surgeons in the Essex area right now. I'm so good at it. I'm frequently, like I do it literally on a daily basis and anyone in the area that needs it, hit me up. <laughs> I can actually give you a five star review. Thank you. And what I would say is we've got it down to a T. 10 seconds, in and out, we're done. No messing about, no, no foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so to answer your question, we've, we've become closer together in that sense. That. We've become closer in a lot of senses. Although obviously having a baby during lockdown or, or being pregnant during lockdown and all this stuff, it's not that weird for us because we've spent the last, so on and off, the last sort of seven years living in each other's shadow, working together. So it's not together. really changed anything that much, but... Oh, I think it's impossible not to get closer together as a result of a pregnancy, particularly if you're uh, finger blasting them every night. <laughs> oh, bum. Do you feel you have lost out on any of the experience of having a baby due to COVID? First thing I'd say is we don't know any different. This no, is first the baby. only experience we've had. Well, Second- it's your first baby. <laughs> that was a joke. I haven't had any other children that I know of. Um, the other thing I'd say is actually I'd say... Apart from the fact that I'm absolutely missing hugging and being with my family and friends, that's obviously been the hardest thing. But that's not a pregnancy thing, is it? Everyone's feeling that. Yes, but some people, I suppose, are being a bit more... We're not, we're not taking any risks. We're, we're not worried taking now. any risks. Because there's no data really on how getting COVID could affect a pregnant woman yeah. and a baby. So Actually, I'd say that COVID has kind of not helped our situation, but it's made it things probably easier in the sense that People aren't going out and having loads of fun anyway. So we're no. not missing out on anything. And I agree. I think I would find it really tough seeing my friends and not drinking and Yeah, so Alex is probably a bit more of a social drinker than I am in normal life. And yeah. obviously when you're pregnant, you, you can't drink. So but it's been the best time ever to be a teetotaler, isn't it? Yeah. Like there's nothing to be missing out on. We're so. just staying at home like everybody else. And it's easy to not drink. Yeah. I so, think it's been, I mean, there's a reason that we've seen a lot of... Uh, Lockdown babies. We can see a lot of babies called Lockie and Corona coming yeah. out next year. <laughs> I'd also say, though, that for our experience, you've managed to come to all our scans together, mm. which I know a lot of partners haven't been able to do, and that I think that must be really hard. Is that just what? Because of our hospital? Yeah, and I suppose the time that when we had our 12- and 20-week scan, it was during the summer yeah. periods where it wasn't so bad. Well, Seb actually had his second child in the very start of lockdown. Yeah. Um, and I've had a mate, a few mates actually who had babies uh, in the last few months as well. And everyone's having different experiences based on what timing, based on what hospital policy yeah. they've got. Um, and as is due late Jan, so we're hoping by then it'll be a bit more relaxed, but there's every chance it won't be. To be honest, I've got a feeling it won't be. But I had a mate recently whose missus took three days in, in hospital and he was only allowed in that room for the last few hours. So he yeah. spent two and a half days in a... Mostly in a corridor, 
A hospital. Yeah. I think one thing I do is I'm quite good at not addressing something until I have to address it. So in the back of my mind, I know that we're probably going to be in a situation where we go into labor and then you're having to wait and I'm going through it by myself, which I don't want to happen. But until I need, until I'm in that situation and it's happening, I suppose I don't need to be anxious about it because no. what's the point? We'll see what happens. There's loads of stuff we've got to work out. We still don't know what the internet connection is like and how the live stream is going to go. <laughs> the, you know, are but, we going to get a strike on Twitch for the for live streaming the the goal mouth angle? Are we doing that? I mean, Twitch make us an offer. No, we're obviously not doing that. No, are we going to no film interest. it for our own private use, uh, pleasure? Uh, I think photographs would be good. Some people take some really nice photos, again, yeah. for private use. Yeah. Although sometimes I've seen, I've got a mate of mine who posted a picture oh, on Instagram. I don't know if you mind me saying, a guy called Tim Warwood. He's a TV presenter, a really good guy, really funny guy. Um, also one of the uh, Winter Olympics presenters as well. And he posted a picture, which I've shown loads of people. because I just, And he posted Instagram the other day. Um, and um, it's uh, so um, amazing. It's literally the baby. He's born one of his kids as soon as it was born, mm. and it's like not what the, you think it looks like in the movies, you know. Yeah. But it was like so well taken. It's great. It was like this move, um, like a Simba moment where the baby's been held up. I think it's beautiful. Is it I don't. Black and white? No, I don't think so. I don't think I'd post it on um, on Instagram personally, but I think it'd be nice for us to have it. And I think that it's a good question. I don't know if we've been asked this question. I think we but have about the baby and footage and stuff yeah. yeah the way i've kind of jokingly been saying it because clearly we're not doing this but i've been saying to people like we're going to exploit the baby for all it's worth until it's born <laughs> but you know like we're not doing that clearly we've only made a couple of videos about it but um i think yeah it's part of what we're we've always sort of captured the key moments in our relationship and yeah. having a baby is the biggest one you can get yeah and so we want to talk about that and we're doing that now but then once the baby arrives i think we'll probably pull back a little bit and then, you know, we'll, I'm sure he'll, he'll be in some content over the next few years. It's not going to be a situation where he's being filmed for entertainment. He's, he's not being the main made, star. He's being made to do things. And, you know, at least until an age where he's responsible enough to actually make a decision whether he likes that sort of thing, would we do that? But we're going to continue to capture our lives yeah. in some extent, which he'll be part of. Um, you know, some people protect the identity and protect the faces of it of their kids, which I respect as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things, you know, we haven't really got an answer to it right now, but we know that we're not going to be doing anything that we think is, is bad for, for our, our son's life. This is an interesting question. And I think I would like to hear from you guys if you've got any input on this or experience of it. How do you think Joey will react to the baby and do you trust him near him? The thing with Joey is... He's a very, very loving dog um, once you're in his circle of trust. Yeah. Anyone in my family, anyone that he's met multiple times, he's great and he, you'd never have a bad experience with Joey. Because um, he's such a lovely looking dog and he's so cute, people think he's a teddy bear sometimes and they just mm. want to go and stroke him. And when someone comes up to him and they don't, he doesn't know, he can be a bit standoffish, particularly if it's outside the house. Yeah, if it's inside the house, he's fine. But if it's outside, if you're on the street and he's on the lead, he's like, back off. He's yeah, just like, why are you getting in my face? It's the same as me, really. Yeah. <laughs> I, I um, anticipate... Uh, mm. He'll be absolutely fine with the baby once he realises he's part of the family, he's in the house. Um, and it's more a question of, you know, can you trust the baby not to do something that's, you know, going to hurt Joey or annoy him? Because then yeah. you can't, because then is it in a wild animal at the end of the day? You know, he's not wild, but you know what I mean? He, yeah. if he gets hit by, he's going to, and dogs only have so many ways to respond. Yeah. They can't go, get out of it. They either go mm, with a claw or they got that with some teeth. Yeah. He's going to maul someone. No. So it's one of them. I think anyone with a dog and a young baby has a certain responsibility to keep them a certain distance yeah. for a lengthy period of time. Maybe slowly introduce him. They talk about doing this scent thing, don't they? Where you mm -hmm. can get something that the baby smell, they've got the baby smell on it and give it to the dog so he starts to get familiar with the smell. Yeah. We'll do things like that. Um, but I 100% I trust Joey uh, with regards to people in our family and close friends and like when they're in the house and it's all, he's, I mean, he's been around your nephews and nieces. Yeah. He's good as gold. You just need to make sure the baby or the toddler or whatever is responsible as well. Yeah. I know. Which you can't ensure with a young baby. No. So there's that distance. There's a part of me that is like, do you know what? Once we've introduced them and they understand each other's role in the house and the family, it'll be fine. I would be lying if I said sometimes I don't have, like, nightmares. You never know, do you? No. My, when I was born... I my, wouldn't leave them alone together. My mum and dad had an old English sheepdog. If you don't know what that is, it's like the Dulux dog. You know, these mm. big old, lovely balls of energy. And um, it's called Digby. And I think when I was born, he was still in the house. And then something happened whereby actually it was not him being aggressive towards one of us. He actually has been protective of us yeah. to the point where he was getting aggressive with my mum and dad because yeah. he wanted to protect us. Yeah. And my mum and dad... I'm sure if you'd asked them a year prior, would you ever get rid of Digby? would have been like, there's no way we love this dog. But 
they had to they had to give him away. He, he found him a new home because it was like the baby or the or it was like, it wasn't yeah. the baby or the dog. It was the dog or or some element of safety. Yeah. You couldn't have both. So even though Digby had a heart of gold, it wasn't compatible. I don't think Joey will fall in that category, but you never know until you know. We'll see. We'll see. We don't know. Watch this space. Yeah, will we'll, Joey we'll be here updated. in a year? breaks my heart no we love joey but it's a game changer having a baby so we'll have to see it's in joey's hands all i say if he behaves himself then he's got he's got a, he's got a job for life here a part of me just thinks he's going to be like yeah it's a baby i'm over it I'm i think he'll be quite protective sofa. i think he'll be quite protective of the baby protective of the baby yeah when we're out and about i think he'll be a good good little partner good little brother so spen big question for you mm. and for me was getting married and having a baby always in the contract if you were to get back together? Should we get that contract out? There is no contract, guys. I've been very careful. I've not signed <laughs> anything. <laughs> and nor have I. I think we said this already, to be fair. We, we might certainly talked about the this. marriage thing, but we knew when we got back together it was on the cards. And yeah. it, it, this is like, we don't need to explain this, but this was a planned pregnancy. Like yes. we, this is, you know, couldn't really get more structured. We got back together. We got engaged. We got pregnant in the space of what, three months? Yeah. Get back together, let's go for it. Yeah, we and shook that, hands, that, we smashed it. That's out. what we do. Like once we've decided on something, we just get on with it, don't we? Yeah, I, I mean, we got lucky. You could argue, like you know, some people take a long time yeah. to get pregnant. We basically got pregnant in like our second month of trying. But obviously, like we'd been together for eight years, we knew that after our year apart, we were getting back together, and we were just going to go full throttle for all the next days. I'm really glad we did because, like I say, we've not missed much this year from being no. pregnant and. I can't wait to, to have the little fella around and then getting some more little fellas to increase the... Uh, more fellas. Spending Alex's army. Um, I will say one thing, though. No one's asked this question, but I've been really, like... I love all the comments we've got on Twitter and, like, on Twitch. YouTube comments, whatever. Like, congratulations on the baby, congratulations on the baby. I don't really interact with them, if I'm honest, because the baby isn't here yet. So it's not that I don't see them. It's not that I don't love them. It's that the baby... We haven't had a baby yet. Like things can go wrong, guys, you know, and, and we're not making this content naively going like, oh, we've got a baby. Everything's great. We know that there's risks and like we know there's a chance that this video could be like the most painful video in the world to watch one day. So it goes wrong. Like, mm. That's the transparency we're doing this with you on. And that's why I'm not interacting with those comments. The day the baby comes and everything's good and he's well and Alex is well and everything's just sweet. And you can sort of say, oh, congrats on the baby. Then we'll absolutely love it. And, you know, we'll get involved and we'll have a celebration, but have a celebration. But right now, obviously, we've got to just... Yeah. Keep our fingers crossed. Somebody's asked one thing about pregnancy that you didn't expect to experience. And leading on from what you've just said, I think one of the things that I didn't envision or take into account when thinking about, you know, being pregnant is the worry that comes with being pregnant. The mm. it's it's getting more talked about more and more often. Um, but there's a lot of risk with pregnancy and it's not always plain sailing. And it's not always right, you get pregnant, you have a baby. So I think one thing that I've not struggled with, but has, it's always in the back of my mind and it's always the thing which makes me stop buying something or stop talking about something or stop this fear of jinxing something happening, which is things can go wrong. And so uh, it's I mean, always I've... being like, as long as everything's okay and baby comes and... But they say that's once you become a parent, that's what your, the rest of your life's like. You're going to have yeah. something to worry about. Like the, the dream is you have stuff to worry about. The dream is you have loads of kids and you have a great family to worry about. Like, yeah. Because obviously, hopefully you don't worry too much. But the point is you love things so much. There's more things that can go wrong. People that can get hurt, accidents that can happen. So you're going to worry more. And that kicks in from the minute you're pregnant, not the minute the baby's born. The thing that shocked me was how... Um, how uh, many pregnancies fail in that first 12 weeks. I didn't know the stats on it. It's actually truly high. And it's like, yeah, you can't get excited before 12 weeks, really. The other thing that started to shock me, as we're starting to find out, is how bloody expensive baby stuff is. Guys and girls, if you don't know, prepare yourselves. Start putting the money away now. When you have to go and buy a pram, you're thinking pram, mortgage, pram, <laughs> mortgage. You can't live in a pram. And they like, grow out of the pram. It's ridiculous. And obviously there's a sliding scale. You can get the bare minimum. You can um, ask family and friends and hopefully and have yeah, hand-me-downs yeah. because these babies grow out of stuff so quickly. Half the stuff is brand new when you... You've already bought too many clothes for him. He's going to grow out of by the time he's left the hospital, mate. It's so hard. They're so cute. 
Yeah, this is the problem. <laughs> right here, this is the problem. Honestly, though, I, I think I've kind of reined it in. I've been like, no, what are the things that are just ridiculous and unnecessary? What are they nice to have and what are the essentials? I think it's Linda Day. I, what I would say is the list of the essentials is long. Yeah, and it's getting bigger every year because there's a new thing you've got to have and it's bloody, there's a thing you can get for pick. I mean, you've got to get the bogeys out their nose for them and there's like a little utensil. I don't know how to blow their nose. I'm sure it's necessary. It I'm is. just saying my mum didn't have one for me, I guarantee you. And yes, she I do have a lot of bogeys now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, people, some people suck it out of a straw, yeah. right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like, that's weird. Um, listen, if you're in a situation which we are, which is we're lucky that we are fortunate enough that we can get the things we need to get and we can afford to get a nice pram or what have you. Um, the point of the matter is if we couldn't afford that, and I'm talking like, oh, I'm going to tell you guys, over a thousand pound for a pram. With all the extra bits that come with it, like the car seat and stuff. Some people, a lot of people can't afford that. And you have to buy the hundred pound pram. You have to get one off off free cycle. You have to get one off your friends or whatever. And that will work. And the baby will have all the best chance of being the president of the United States one day. Like, do you know what I mean? You don't have to have this thousand pound pram. The problem is more is the economy is like the the, the the consumer lifestyle we live in now is that we all want. Well, if there's a thousand pound one, I want. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. We're in the shop and we're looking around. I'm like, well, why wouldn't I get the thousand pound one? It's clearly better. I want my baby to have the best. That's part of the problem. It might be better. No one's saying it's bad. It's just. You don't need it. I don't no. need an iPhone. I could get over 3210, but you know what I mean? It's cool these things exist, but just prepare yourselves, guys. Prepare yourselves. I think the, yeah, I think the amount of stuff they need has shocked me. I was like, well, we'll just get like the stuff they actually need. But that list is long. Other than football, what sports or hobbies would you like to get Spencer Jr. involved in? Spencer Jr. Not he's cool, not going to be his cool name. On the subject of names, that's the question we've had the most, by the way, is have oh. you thought about names yet? Local people have asked that. We're going to do a separate video on that. Uh, I, I've, I'm going to devise a little tool for helping us figure out the name of the baby. And you guys are going to watch that process unfold live on another video. It won't be live. It will be, be, be on YouTube. Uh, as for sports, mm. which was the question was, my, my personal approach, which hopefully we agree on, is basically going to be to expose the lad to as much things as he wants. If he wants to do ballet, he can do ballet. Obviously, I'm going to give him a little bit of football experience as well, but it's, you know, anything is open. Um, and the one that resonates with him the most is the one that he can do. He might not like sport at all. You know, I'm getting into chess at the moment after the Queen's Gambit. If he likes to play chess, if he can beat me by the time he's three, four, five years old, it proves nothing because I'm rubbish at chess. If he can beat me from three months, we're on to a winner. <laughs> Expose him to everything. Just yeah. give him all the exposure and experiences. And then at 10 years old or whatever, he can decide to concentrate on something if he wants to. Exactly. I suppose you're just going to say to them like, Right, you've had a taste of everything now. Do you want to hone in on anything? And what's he got? Music? A natural, yeah, music. I'd love him to play some instruments as well. You know, I, would oh, love I can teach him everything I know in guitar before we leave the hospital. I would love for him to be able to sing. To be honest, that's not going to happen. Do you think that's possible? Both of us can't sing very well. Well, don't throw me in with you. I, I can hold a tune better than you. I've been told I've got a great bravado. Bravado? Is that it? <laughs> Is it bravado? It's not bravado, is it? No, Let me get the message not. up from my friend You've Lloyd got great Griffith. Bravado. Lloyd Griffith said, "I have a nice vibrato. It's vibrato. My vibrato. pitch is all over the place. Oh, vibrato is when you do a little wobbly sounds. Like, uh. don't sing. It sounds bad. <laughs> no, Alex and I aren't good singers. It is no, true. But, but I'm great. I'm a great performer. I always say I've got everything you need to be a worldwide, either West End like stage star or 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 um like pop star." You know, everything you need to be a huge star apart from the voice. You've got the belief in yourself. I've got the raw, natural and sexual charisma. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Come on now. I've got everything. I've got the moves. I can I can dance. You've can, got the shoulder rhythm. Got the, I've been told, and I quote, I've got the shoulders of a young Samantha Mumba. But basically what I'm saying is, can two parents with bad singing styles... Yeah, I don't know. Can that child have a good voice? Some of it's about your throat. The, the tone of your voice, like people that have that Freddie Mercury tone, it's because they have similar throat shape. I watched a video about it. But in, de in general, I think the ability... I was talking to my friend Marius about this the other day. In general, your ability to sing, I think, is more based on your hearing and your ability to match sounds... Mm -hmm. And clearly, we don't have very good hearing. <laughs> it's so. Bad. That's where you're supposed to go. Pardon. Uh -oh. <laughs> I was also thinking, like, this is a bit of a um, one of those questions to it where it's like you kind of want your child to be good at everything that you weren't good at, and also, how much are you willing to push your child in something like hobbies? Fine. You can get better at singing. I do believe if you train yourself to sing from a young age, you could get a lot better. You and I could still improve as well, but obviously, we, all these things you pick them up young, you get helps a lot but the you, singing thing a lot of it is genetic i think do you aspire though to have a child that is like the 
the at the top of his game of doing something like a top level sportsman or a musician to like the highest level i would love that but only if it makes them happy yeah and only and, if and, they and, want and to do it and let's be honest a lot of that stuff comes with a lot of baggage yeah to and be at the actual top of your game i would love my son like to be playing like non-league football do you know what i mean like to be a really good footballer but maybe he's got his own career as well like, I'd still be super proud of him. Yeah. And not if, if he ever plays football, it's fine as well. But you know what I mean? Like, to just got good at something, and they're really good at tennis, and they play tennis on the weekends with their mates, and they're just really good. Like, yeah. that's just, that's a cool, people underestimate how hard that is to do. I, I consider myself a bit of a jack of all trades when it comes to sport. Like, I really am not great at any sport, but I'm pretty good at most sports. Like, I can mix it with other, you know, average players at, at all the racket sports, you know, at, uh, most I play football, I play rugby. I'm about myself to go in any random group and pick it up, and I think that's quite a good trait to have. And, and a lot and a lot of people like that as well. I'm never going to be exceptional at something, but I'm like the fact that I can throw my hand to anything and, and do all right. And that's I'd be pretty proud of my kid if he can do that as well. I think I read something really interesting once, which was we all aspire to like be at the, the top percentile of something of doing something, um, whereas the majority of the population is in the average bracket. And it's like, why don't we, what's so wrong with average? What's so bad with being like, okay at something? Nothing. But it's all, in our minds, it's like this egotistical thing where it's like, well, I have to be the best at something. I've got this thing at the moment where I keep picking up things and you know what I'm like. I, I get really into them for a period of time. Like literally the last week I've been playing chess like hours a day. Like when I've, when I've got time really late at night just to try and get better. And I'll probably lose interest. I was doing loads of Duolingo in the summer trying to get better at Spanish. And then I lost interest in that. Like same with guitar the year before that. And I've never seen any of them through long enough to actually get really good at them. I don't speak fluent Spanish. I'm not a grandmaster in chess. And I can <laughs> barely play guitar still. So it's like... You've got that half a song. Like, do you know what I mean though? It's like, I can pick... I, I'm, I'm for worry. I'm going to keep doing this for another decade. Mm. And then I'm going to be one of these guys who's like a party. And I, oh, I can do a bit of that. And it's all right. It's not that good. We actually want you to play the piano or the guitar. Can you stop it? And I know, but I know chopsticks. And they're like, yeah, so does everyone, mate. I'm just going to sit and watch. Unless you bring up chess and I'll beat you all because I'm brilliant at chess. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. would it be better to have one skill? Everyone like, he's the guy that's sick on piano. He's got really good at chess. But to be probably better, really good at one thing, there are you have to focus everything on yeah, that. Yeah, you have to focus. And you, you do have miss to out. Give up everything else. Yeah. And then what, it's like, what's what, better? Let us know in the comments. What do you think is actually better? We're not talking about doing it for a living. Forget about being an expert when you're being paid to be a guitar player or a footballer or whatever. But would you rather be really good at something and your mates like you're the party, you know, party trick is to get it out and do that thing? Or would you rather just be able to throw your hand at anything? So I actually think that the second, the latter is, is not appreciated as much as it I should think be. So too. There's a few other questions we haven't answered. We've run out of time, but maybe we can do another one of these in the future. We've got the next video on the baby stuff is going to be us looking at names and trying to f figure out what the hell we're going to call this little fella. We might have to patent this uh, thing that we've come up with. We've created a new bespoke patented technology, <laughs> which will be in the next video. And, um, and yeah, we've got some Spanish Cup stuff coming soon as well. Yeah. I don't want to give too much away on that, but... It's coming, guys. It's coming. And also the baby's coming. Yee! Nine weeks to go. You excited? Very excited. Okay. Are you excited? Let us know by dropping a like on the video. Subscribe for more. Until next time. Don't get changing.